I'm going to work through another activity that uses the code book here. And I'm also going to be showing you a couple of different things that weren't evident on the earlier podcast. There's an accompanying document that tells you the patient's sex, age, admission, discharge dates, disposition, diagnoses, procedures, that kind of thing. So you'll be referencing that when you attempt to repeat this activity. This person's age is 69. He was admitted on 320. You can either type here or you can go in here to your calendar and hit 320, whichever way. Discharge 331. We are going to be looking. You can see that there's many products on here. APC is an outpatient product, so we're going to go back to the DRG we used earlier. And it is Medicare. She's 69, so she is in the Medicare population. In this particular case, she's going to be discharged to skilled nursing. And now we're ready to start with our diagnoses. She has different ulcers on her body. She's a type 2 diabetic, and she's going to be having some debridement of those ulcers. In this particular scenario, there's also several what are called social determinants that are going to be coded, and this is something that will be covered more in the future in uh, the ICD-10-CM class. These are new guidelines that just came up in 2018. So let's start with the fact that she has diabetes. It is diabetes mellitus. She does have type 2. She has some ulcers. So we're going to go here. See, there's a foot ulcer on there, but not what I want to code. So I'm going to go other. And you're going to say ulcer. Skin ulcer is other. The first one I'm going to code is her calf. In this particular one, the fat layer is exposed. And it is on the right. And it, what this is referring to is the non-pressure ulcer evolved to a higher severity. If it evolved to a higher severity when the patient was in the hospital, that is going to impact the DRG. So let's say in this case it did not. So now we've coded the, the calf. Let's code the ankle. The ankle was also fat layer exposed. Also on the right, it did not evolve to a higher severity. There's also an ulcer on the right buttock. And it is the most severe with necrosis of muscle. It did not evolve to higher severity. So we've coded all the ulcers that she's come in with. So we don't want to code anymore. She is on insulin. Not anything else. And here we have type 2 diabetes mellitus with other skin ulcer. The three non-pressure chronic ulcers that she has, which are associated with the diabetes, and the insulin. We learn in the history that the patient is reporting she is not taking her insulin as prescribed, often forgetting to take it. So that is what is considered an underdosing. So that is not coded yet. We have to code that. So we're going to add a diagnosis. In this case, I want us to get the code book. When we look at the code book, we see an electronic document. We're going to go here and we're going to go underdosing. When we type in underdosing, it says we can also go to the table of drugs and chemicals, which we are going to do. And we know our substance in this case is insulin. Here we are with insulin, and the sixth column is underdosing. If you don't remember that, scroll back up to the top, underdosing, go back down to insulin, that would be this one. Now it opens up. The first part would be your index. The second screen that's opened would be your tabular. And you can see here is the underdosing of insulin. If you look over here, these little tabs, the first is a coding handbook that you can use as a reference. And here it is giving you this information. I don't think helps us in this case. 
This one is your Medicare code edit, and it tells us that this code with either an initial, a subsequent, or a sequela is not an acceptable principal diagnosis. So that's what that, and that's a good reminder. So we're going to code this one. And it is an initial encounter. You're going to use additional codes to specify underdosing of medication regimen. So now we have the diabetes, we have the chronic ulcers, the long-term current use of insulin, and the underdosing code. What we haven't coded yet would be the non-compliance with medication. So we're going to add a diagnosis, non-compliance, non-compliance with medication regimen, underdosing, unintentional, other, okay, unintentional underdosing for other reason. Then we're going to add, it likes it, we like this one. See, it says, please review the following codes that will be added. So then we're going to add another diagnosis. And that is going to be the fact that she's a caregiver for her husband. I want to direct code this one, D63.6. And that is... None of those. Dependent relative needing care at home. So now we have these Z codes are considered to be social determinants that the guidelines in 2018 says we really need to add to charts to tell the whole story. So now we're going to do some of the procedures, and in this case, we're going to use the tables. Here's the first one. We know that this patient had a debridement of the ulcer on the buttock with an open approach. So that's going to be medical surgical. The buttock had necrosis of muscle. So you're going to have to go into the muscle body system. Debridement, in this case, the root operation is excision. The butt is going to be the hip muscle. And as I said earlier, and on our document it tells us it's an open approach. And it is not diagnostic. So here's our procedure for excision of the right hip, the ulcer that went down to the muscle. Then you have other procedures where you're debriding the ulcer on the calf and the ankle. Those are both fat layer exposed. So that is going to be the subcutaneous body system. So we start with medical surgical. Subcutaneous. Excision. The first one is the calf, which if you look here, that was going to be the right lower leg. It is percutaneous. And I'm getting these characters from the information that's given in your accompanying word document. No qualifier. And then you're going to add a third procedure on the ankle, come in here. It also is exposed fat layer, so you're going to be getting to your subcutaneous system. It is still excision, and it is the ankle. Let's see, sorry, the ankle. Right, lower leg. 
there is no ankle here. You're still going to be using your right lower leg, percutaneous, and no qualifier. So there you go. Okay, so our DRG, if we look up here, using the principal diagnosis of the type 2 diabetes with the ulcer, DRG 982 has a weight of 2.4. You see also on these columns, it's telling you what codes are affecting that DRG as well as which codes are CC here. You may recall from other courses or perhaps from your reimbursement teaching, the DRG, you will have a DRG without MCC or CC, a DRG with an MCC, which is a major complication comorbidity, or a DRG with a CC, which is a complication comorbidity. This particular case only has a CC, so that's going to be not the highest reimbursement, but it is going to be an impact in your reimbursement. If we had, say we went here, we know that this cannot be the principal, but let's say if we tried to, and we put move to principal, it will allow you to do that. That's why it's important to know the codebook. This would be kicked back by the payer and they wouldn't pay this case. You'd have a denial and have to redo everything. So this is why it's important to know your guidelines and to use your codebook because as you see here, the encoder allows you to make that the principal. That's not correct. If we had made the non-pressure chronic ulcer the principal, you see that your weight for the DRG came way down. So you don't want to do that. You want to choose the correct principal diagnosis that will get you the correct payment for this hospital stay. I used the excision of the right buttock muscle as your principal procedure because it was the most involved of the ulcers. What I want to do also on this particular one is take you up here to the corner where you can print these things. Hover over each one so you see what's available. The reference books that are available for you, when you click on reference, there's so many here. ICD-9 is available because if you're working in a legacy system or in a hospital doing some research, you may have to work with ICD-9 codes as well as ICD-10. Here you've got the two code sets integrated in the code book, and here's your CPT. There's also coding clinics. Always good to have that because you can, you may recall there's a coding clinic and you need to reference it. You can get to them here. Your CPT assistant, which is similar to a coding clinic but only for CPT. Here's the pharmacology reference, a medical dictionary, anatomy appendices, and your Salvier's anatomy plates. If you go here, you can actually choose what you want to look at and see those arteries there. It's a great resource. Also up here in this corner, if you want to change what you're seeing here, you can go into View, Patient Code Summary, and it's going to allow you to make changes there. If you didn't want your codes to be numbered, for example, click on that. Those numbers go away. So there's another one just looking at having to add social determinants, and the importance of knowing when you have assigned the correct principal diagnosis.